Hey everyone, it's Carlos PC747. Welcome. Without further ado, here are my top 10 tips that you can use in order to save time and money if you're working on any pilot rating. Tips that will increase your understanding so that you can be more efficient and also safer. Most of us are already well aware of the costs associated with flight training. They've gone up substantially. But the biggest factor in flight training isn't even shown. That factor is the student. How many times per week will they be learning to fly? It's crucial because it will determine how costly their flight training really is. I wish flight instructors would tell new students about the law of recency because it has such a major impact on how much a student will spend in their flight training. For my students who flew three times a week or more, they averaged 50 plus hours of flight time before they got their licenses. For my students who flew twice a week or less, they averaged at a minimum 70 plus hours of flight time. That is an additional 20 hours because all those additional hours were spent reviewing things that they had actually forgotten. The law of recency actually applies to anything someone is learning that's new, not just flying. Frequency, or the lack of it, will also be a determining factor in the student's enjoyment. This is because if you're flying enough, you'll be learning new things every single week. You won't be reviewing things that you've forgotten. Tip number two. After completing your pre-flight, do a wide berth walk around, that is, from a much greater distance. By standing too close to an aircraft, you just don't see the big picture. Have all chocks and tie downs, including the tail, really been removed? Have pedostatic and engine covers been removed? Have taxiing obstructions really been noticed? What about fuel caps? Tip number three. Do what the locals do in much colder climates during the winter. If your aircraft has been sitting in a warm hangar and it's snowing outside, don't have it pulled out. Immediately when the hangar doors are open, instead, allow the aircraft to cool to the outside temperature. If you wait long enough and it's cool enough, the falling snow will slide right off because the falling snow won't melt and you won't have to be de-iced. Here's another way to save a bundle of money. Only place your aircraft in a warm hangar the night before your departure, if you can. Tip number four. For anyone who uses flightplan.com to file their IFR flight plan and you're flying out of busy airports, stop filing what you feel like filing and file what is being approved by air traffic control for your direction of flight on your day of departure because that's the only route clearance you're going to get. The arrow above depicts the approved westbound route between Teterboro and Scottsdale but that route will also apply to the majority of westbound aircraft, not just aircraft going to Scottsdale. There is also a delineation between the routes that have been approved by air traffic control and the routes below that have been filed but not approved. Tip number five. Here's something you can try to make controlled airspace a little bit easier for your primary students. Let them know that when we're talking about controlled airspace, we're really talking about two types of control. There's a communication slash equipment requirement, and then there's weather requirements. Class A, B, C, D, and E all have a communication requirement. E, only when the weather is below basic VFR at the surface. The other type of controlled airspace has to do with weather control. In the picture above, every magenta circle represents an airport that has an instrument approach. Or approaches. Why? Because they're trying to protect not just you, but pilots who might be conducting instrument approaches. Weather restrictions increase as you get closer to airports served by instrument approaches. Tip number six, request progressive taxi instructions when you're taxiing around any airport that you're not intimately familiar with, day or night. The controllers are there to help use them. This is what progressive taxi instructions sound like. 4891G, 
Julia to continue on uh, Echo, and it turns into Alpha. Then you're going to make a right on Bravo, cross 35. All right, continue on Echo, which turns into Alpha, then make a right on Bravo, cross 35, November 901, Julia. Too many taxi violations occur because pilots don't ask for help when they should. Wind 080 at 7 altimeter. Can you fly in IFR conditions without an instrument rating? Actually, yes, you can under certain conditions. A good example is in the Los Angeles Basin where it gets smoggy a lot and the weather drops below three miles, the weather conditions become IFR. You can actually depart in IFR conditions so long as you obtain something called a special VFR clearance. No instrument rating, daytime only. Tip number seven, know how to request a special VFR clearance when departing and when arriving at an airport that is IFR, but has no clouds that would be a factor. I would never recommend using it as a tool to scud run in and out of clouds to an airport that has clouds that are less than a thousand feet above the ground. Tip number eight, never cross a runway without checking for traffic first, like this corporate jet crew did because they misunderstood their taxi instructions. What's far worse is they didn't verify that the runway was clear before crossing. Here's another example where an aircraft is coming in to land and an aircraft on the ground will taxi completely oblivious. will continue taxiing across the runway because they didn't check for landing traffic beforehand. Controllers make mistakes too. I've been told to line up and wait when aircraft were on final and the controller later apologized. How do you orient yourself to an airport you've never been to? Tip number nine, know how to be oriented to an airport you've never been to. When the tower asks you to enter left or right traffic so that they aren't surprised and so that you won't have any problems. Here's just one example of several aids that are available to help you orient with an airport you've never been to before entering the area. However, another way is just superimposing the landing runway onto your steam or glass compass card. In this example, the tower says, make right traffic, runway 15, report right downwind. Since you're approaching from the south, you're already close to entering the 45 and making right traffic, runway 15. In this example, the landing runway is runway 27, and the tower assigns you to make left traffic, report left downwind, runway 27. You are already approximately at a 45 degree entry and are able to make left traffic. Tip number 10, a crosswind landing technique and a side slip technique are the same technique. They are both cross control maneuvers. The longitudinal axis remains parallel with the runway and additional drag is produced. For those of you who may not know, they just call them side slips because the longitudinal axis of the aircraft slides from side to side through the extended center line of the landing runway. Typically, in a crosswind landing, a crab will be held until the flare. However, with less experienced pilots, it's a good idea to set up the cross control for the crosswind landing early, like this pilot did. The problem is he doesn't hold it. He releases it and lands sideways. The cross controls are supposed to be held continually through the flare and even the landing and after the landing with strong winds. Remember, a side slip technique and a crosswind technique are identical, except for the crosswind component. Here, the pilot is doing an excellent job of holding the cross control in a big crosswind, not just during the approach, but through the flare and landing, and even after the landing, he is rock solid. He doesn't release the cross controls at any point during the flight. Another reason to hold the cross controls early in a big wind is if the winds are too strong, you'll know soon enough and you can go around. I hope some of these tips will help you as much as they have helped me. 
If you like this video, let me know, comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks so much for watching.